testing the microphone, testing the microphone. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. Sweet! So, what's up guys? Chris Ford here, and this is my first live stream on Fire Toga Productions. And today I wanted to talk about green screening, live green screening, and live stream green screening. Right now behind me in my studio, there is a green sheet across the wall that you cannot see because once I turn the green screen effect on my camera, I can't turn it off. Actually, I could probably do that live. Aha! So now you can see what I've got behind me and that is just this green screen. It's actually pretty well lit. You can see on one of the sides of me that you can see the background that is there. And that's because I'm sitting in the middle of the camera, but I didn't want to be in the middle of the camera on the final product. So I moved myself to the left or the right. It's really hard to tell what direction everything is. Um, the key to this setup that I have right now is how bright the green screen is and also how bright I am. So back when I first started doing my video game channel, I had my lights on the green screen really close to the green screen, like shooting upwards, but that's not really how light works. It has to come diagonally up towards the screen. So one, that was the number one thing that I figured out that actually made it easier to green screen. Uh, and then secondarily, I got two other lights, one right here and one right here, both with umbrellas. It's not the perfect lighting setup. I'm in like a room, so there's not a lot of room, but it is way better than what I used to be doing, and it is super bright, and that is good for everything. Um, typically, if I was doing a green screen, I would use this camera right here, which is the Panasonic HCX1 camera and I would just record it with the screen. I wouldn't know what was going on. <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to live stream it. I would just take the video with the green screen behind me, put it in the software, and then all of a sudden, I'd have a background. As you can see, I disappeared on the side there. So, the reason that live stream green screening is cool is because you can actually see what is happening. So right now I can see the background is like some kind of fake studio by looking at my computer monitor over there. Stop putting my hand outside the border. And if you want your hand to never go outside the border, make the border the whole border. Um, <coughs> so how do I have this set up with the Panasonic HCX1 camera? There's a company called Elgato. They do all sorts of video game streamer gear and it's called cam link I think it was like 80 bucks I can't remember it could have been even more than that it could have been over 100 and that connects my Panasonic HCX1 directly into the computer and I can use it as a webcam or a monitor and since this is the first live stream obviously I've never done that before but what I do is I set it up to the monitor so I can see what the output is going to look like or I can output a video this like a video like this with the screen without doing any work in post-production, it's ready to go if I've scripted it right or if it's a live kind of format like this, then I'll be able to just have that file and the background's already switched. I don't have to go into After Effects and add it in there. Uh, the other thing I have is called OBS Studio, which is free software. It's amazing for live streaming. Uh, a, mo a lot of the live streamers use it for video games and once you start to learn a few of the details and a few of the special moves then it gets to be really cool for example it works so well I could just snap my fingers and now I'm a financial stock advisor now I'm in outer space I think probably now I'm on the beach Mukahakaliki. now I'm in love. I don't even know what's behind me right now unless I look over the left and then I break the coolness. Boom. 
Um, feel free to leave a chat or a question with about any of this stuff. And if you're watching this after it's live, I may delete it because it's kind of just a test. But I wanted to talk about green screen and I didn't feel like editing a super long video. So the live stream, uh, <clears throat> you've got your camera. And if you don't have a Panasonic HCX-1, a lot of my subscribers do, and you have like a one of these DSLRs, something like that, the cam link doesn't work great with everything. I think when I plug this camera in, it shows the menu screen on the on the footage, so there or at least shows like the box, the focus box or something that you can't remove. So it's really annoying unless your computer, your camera does a direct output like a monitor output, I guess. Uh, but it worked perfectly with the HCX1, and if you have that or any other video camera, make sure you don't out. You're not recording in 4K. You're not recording in anything but 1080 because it can only read 1080 uh, at this point. The other cool thing I have from Elgato is called Stream Deck. And that is how we change the background so easily. One press of the button and it changes what's behind me, which is really cool. And if you, if I just, you put my left hand, kind of memorize the buttons, there's actually really, this is the coolest thing I've ever had. You can, pro you can use it in Photoshop, you can use it in After Effects, any software you have, you can program like macros or, or shortcuts into these, and it has an LCD screen behind each button so that you can actually put icons in there. So right now, it just kind of, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says, like, I think I wrote studio, money, space, beach, heart. I just wrote them in text, but I could have made icons for them to make it easier for me to view, visually see which button I'm pressing and where I'm going. <clears throat> uh, but this, this piece of equipment here is awesome, and it's not only for video. It's for basically, it's basically a keyboard macro thingy shortcut device. Um, so that, again, that's, that's, this is all useful for the live stream where it's like boom, boom, boom on the go. Um, when I'm behind the camera and I'm playing video games, I actually, I got to do everything. I got to play the game while I'm changing whatever camera angle. I mean, you can do so many cool things. I didn't even set it up to do anything cool. I wish I would have done that, but you can set up multiple cameras. You can set up, uh, different zooms, you can, different backgrounds, all sorts of crazy overlays and stuff that, that just looks really awesome. Um, what else do we have here for the green screen? <laughs> so, a long time ago, the first green screen I ever did was I went and I got green neon poster board from Walmart and green neon green duct tape, and I took four or six green posters and tape them into a big box. I taped it to my wall, and then I filmed with that as the green screen, and it actually did a good job because the key, one of the keys to green screening besides lighting and having a good green screen and all that is just to have good software like After Effects and the key light, um, what's it called, plug-in, which is free, comes with After Effects, and they've actually, in the newer After Effects CC, they've added like, the three green screen, it's just easier to, gr to green screen post editing. But so I just had posters, it worked out pretty well. Then I bought, I'm sure a lot of YouTubers have done this, but they bought the thing from Amazon, it's probably $120, it comes with two poles, and like you put the cloth across the two poles. Ah, and you can, so it, yeah, it comes across two poles. It was really annoying. The poles were annoying. The idea was that it was portable and you could move it around and you could do it. It's horrible. It's, I hate it so much. You have to assemble the poles and put it all together. And then when you do it, it takes up space, not just left to right, but forward and backwards, because in order for the poles to stand on each side, they have to have you know, balance on the bottom so it goes out and the screen was out from the wall a few inches and it just took up so much space. So what I did was I got rid of the poles there somewhere else 
and I just taped the green cloth that came with it. And you could probably get this green cloth by itself without getting the poles. I recommend do not get the poles, just get the green cloth. And then I just used thumbtacks and tacked it to the wall. So the entire back wall in this room is just a green sheet. And it's really cool. It's not removable, so the only regret I have is I w I'd like to have just a regular white background that I don't have to do any green screen work to for when I do different uh, showcases of different items. Like, oh, here's the lights. Ugh. I don't want the green behind me. I want it to be white, but I can't because I've it's permanently affixed to the wall. And it's not really permanent because I actually took it down at one point when I wasn't doing YouTube, and I just put it back up and actually made it better. But um, it was very wrinkled, too, and after about 24 hours, the wrinkles just completely disappeared because of gravity, which is awesome. And at the bottom, the sheet is so big that it's kind of rolled up towards the wall so that it can unroll and you can do like a full body green screen with your feet on the, <laughs> on the ground. Um, but that, it's not great for that. I've done a few things with that, and it's really not amazing, but... Still, it's better than having posters like I had before. But again, the key are the lights. This light here, I believe it's like $20 at Home Depot for one of these. It's heavy duty, hardcore. I've dropped it a hundred times. It is amazing. It doesn't get too hot. I, and that's, I've got two of them facing the screen. And even if you don't have a green screen and you need lighting, for your YouTube videos and stuff, these do a great job. You don't want to like put them facing you like that. It might do, but if they're just on in the room, it brightens up the room so much. So these are really good first piece of equipment, first piece of lighting to get if you're doing a YouTube channel or doing videos for YouTube or other things. And that is a, that's a tip that I found from people online. And what they didn't tell me was that you want to put those things, if you have a green screen, away from the green screen, shooting towards the green screen so that the light kind of distributes more evenly. Right at the bottom, you can see how much more bright it is at the bottom. If I put the camera up to where I'm standing, then it's much better. But still, that's not too overly bright down there, although on the, that side there, it looks a little overly bright. And you can also see a little patchwork thing I did right there. That was because there's a power outlet on the wall. You don't want to cover up a power outlet with your screen. So I had to cut a hole in it. And then when I removed it and put the screen back up, the hole was in a different place. And then I cut a new hole in it over there, which I can't show you. Um, and that little square hasn't been a problem yet. It's low to the ground, so I don't, it's not really been in anything. However, um, I don't, let's actually check it out. I don't think it shows up. Uh, where was it? Yeah, you can, yeah, see how you can kind of see it right there you can kind of see it right there on the live green screen oh i've got that's cool i've got the monitor on my camera that shows me without the background obviously so but yeah with after effects that's easier to get rid of but on the live shoot i wouldn't want it in there because obviously it's got a little problem uh, the obs software green screen filter gets a big thumbs down but i mean it's all you can do so lighting is key, but I can still feel like I see a little green around my head and stuff. And you just really need good lighting <coughs> to get it to work. Um, so yeah, so that green screen thing that I bought from Amazon also came with two lights with the umbrellas. Um, I don't know all the technical things. They're just fluorescent lights. And now... Over the years, they broke. I would use them, like I told you about those, where I wasn't facing them towards me. I was just lighting the room. Um, but now I actually have them set up with the umbrellas right here. And combining that with the fact that I'm lighting my screen better, and it's just a way better picture. You can actually see me. Before, I was really dark when I was playing my games and stuff, which is actually something I kind of wanted because uh, YouTube video gaming is more of a sitting home in your pajamas thing and you don't really want to be all lit up on screen but that's that's uh 
something. If I start it up again, I'll definitely use this setup and be brighter. Uh, what else do we have on the green screen? Let's see. Um, the w so the way I'm live shooting it where I said we can output directly what's happening because YouTube is actually outputting and it's going to just send out this video once this is over. Uh, you can use it as a monitor, the OBS, and then just use the footage from your camera. It, but I'd have to hit record on my camera and record on my computer, obviously. But if I hit record on my camera, the whole thing would output with the green screen behind me and it would just be me. And then I would have to go in to the software. And when I said, hey, let's go to outer space, I'd have to go to the software and add the screen in there and when I wanted to change. So this is like really, really sleek, easy, quick. But if you have a problem like that little wall thing, uh, that's going to show up in the post and you're not going to be able to fix it. So if it's something really professional that you want to do and not just oh, floating through space, then you're going to want to record it with your camera and press record on the camera whereas that is and that doesn't even exist i mean maybe do two recordings actually but that wouldn't even count because you're going to use this one and then you're going to manually green screen everything out and uh again the reason for that would be because the green screen on the software is not great uh so you're going to get a better cutout if you use this with after effects and the regular camera um, other than doing shows like this on my video game channel, I would play games with the game in the background or whatever, and I'd be small and shrink down. But um, we also did shows where um, peep, the chat would be on the screen, and you can talk like what we're doing now, where I'm just talking about a topic, and then people in the chat room will, can ask questions, and you can interact with the chat. So that's one way to use this and you don't even need a green screen to do that obviously you could have a background of whatever but if you have a green screen and you have time and you have all your show planned out then you can just press a button and change the backgrounds and the backgrounds don't have to be uh, cheesy stuff like this the backgrounds could be stuff like oh, space disappeared the background could be stuff like, uh, just like our studio here, where you have a little box, and in that box is what you, like some link or a, a website or whatever. This software also lets you switch over where you can go to the computer, so you can show tutorials of, you know, actually what you're working on on your computer. Uh, and if you do that, you just want to be careful because... It'll pick up the whole screen and it'll be in real time and people will be able to see all your bookmarks or icons or if your, bank, if your screensaver is your bank account or information or something like that, they'd be able to see it. So I don't like doing live, com doing work on my computer live just because of stuff like that where your name might show up or something uh, in one of your windows or I don't know. Uh -huh. so the so what have I used green screen with? I've used it with the Logitech. I've got like the Logitech webcam that everything I have, I basically said, what does everyone on YouTube have? They all have this webcam. Uh and it's okay, but this Panasonic HCX1, I already knew this was a great camera. It's for, it's a $3,000 camera. And I didn't think I'd be using it in a studio setting. Um, but it's just, it's so good. It's amazing. And the fact that it connects to the computer with cam link, it's just going to be really awesome if I ever decide to do more live streaming stuff or more, um, videos where instead of, I'm just on, I like the web where I'm on the webcam and I'm just like, Hey guys, I'm on, and you can see the background is just like, you know, some cameras and some drawers and not my drawers, my underwear, but like a drawer. Uh, I kind of like that look where I'm just on the side. Um, but I've done videos where I have this studio set up and I say, oh, look in this box. It's uh, some feature. So I just like to experiment with stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> but in the end, it's always everything works better without the green screen. Um, you can do cool things with green screen, but I don't know. It's just it always seems some kind of cheesiness to it to me. Um, 
And a lot of that it probably has to do with the backgrounds because these are the cheesiest backgrounds you could possibly get. Um, the one, like, th see, and then the other problem is that it's just from the waist up. So I like when it's, when you can get like a long shot if you've ever seen Tosh.0 or the Joel McHale show. They'll actually show you what this, their studio looks like and the green screen goes down, but then it goes all the way across the floor so that they can get a full body shot on the green screen. Uh, and I think that adds a big dimension to green screening and makes it look a lot better. Um, I also am not, I don't have the greatest lighting and I don't have the greatest knowledge of the software and the, how the plugins work and everything. So I'm not doing like the greatest green screen work on the computer that you could possibly do. So that might be also why I don't like the final output of the green screen. I, it's not as perfect as I, I would like it to be or as the studio would have it. Um, but, but yeah, so the, let's, so the keys um, are lighting the, the backdrop, lighting yourself, uh, having, basically having After Effects. I know Apple had on I think I, I started editing on iMovie a long long time ago and I know they have a lot of user friendly s green screen removal stuff like that Google Hangouts I think has a decent one too um, but I have nothing beats After Effects key light that I've used so far and the OBS software if you are going to do live streaming there's other options for live streamers like XSplit and I can't remember the name of the other one that people use but this one is free, and it just, it's really cool. And I, this new lighting, I just, it looks so good. You can actually see me, and it's not, there's no shadows on the background. It's just perfect. So, and, oh yeah, this is another thing I picked up a long time ago. Um, because the green screen lighting suggests you not only have lights on your you, you want to light up the screen, you want to light up the actor, but you also want to have like a backlight, so I don't have that either. And then some people have three lights on the actor, and this was the light that I got. I can't even remember why I got it, now that I think about it, but um, works okay in, in a bar, in a dark kind of bar area. Uh, that's space, and then outside it kind of works well at, at night. Uh, but in here, like, just I don't know. It's it doesn't do what these other lights do. So I would not recommend using a tiny little thing. I've also seen online a lot of people have like a ring light that's right on their camera, and these are solutions that. Uh, I mean, I would just search YouTube and just watch every video. That's how I determine what kind of equipment I have. I've got all sorts of stuff here. And most of it was by watching 100 YouTube videos and w finding out what everybody's using and see what the common thread is, what the common, what videos do you do like that person. Like, if you're doing the video game stuff, there's 100 different ways to set it up. If you're doing tech stuff, um, it's a little... A little easier to kind of figure out because all the tech channels kind of give you their background stuff like I'm kind of doing here. Um, I kind of regret not having a second camera hooked up to my software, which, like I said, can happen so that I could show you. I might be able to do it. Oh, cool, guys. So, so yeah, we've got our second camera set up. The lighting is really bad. I'm going to fix the lighting here for a second. Sweet. So, ha, ha, 
Aha. So now you guys can see the setup. We've got light number one. We've got the camera set up there. It's not, the audio is not coming from the camera. The audio is coming from this microphone, which is going into the computer. You can see, I can see myself live on screen. Got a second light there. And as you can see, I'm in like a room and I've got a bed set up in this room. So there's, you know, things, lights on the bed, everything's crammed in. It's not super studio-like, uh, but it does the job. I can't afford to get another office. Uh, and then here's the lights on the floor. <coughs> and they shine up at the screen. The screen, the green screen even has, like, stains on it. It's gross. There's the other light. That's lighting up the screen. If I would want to kind of put them out farther, but again, um, everything is just cram, cram, crammed into this room. Um, and then whenever I live stream, I have my laptop so that I can make sure everything is going live. I've got my monitor over here where I run everything and all the backgrounds. I've got all sorts of screens and speakers. and I've got some mixers because I do different audio in and out and whatever. I had a I had one of the better more compli not better. I had one of the more complicated setups when I on my for my YouTube channel. And um that does not necessarily mean it's a good thing, but if you can run them correctly, you can get some really nice looking live streams going. And yeah, just make sure you don't use cheesy backgrounds like this one. Well, this one's the worst, so and uh, that is the end of this show. So thank you for watching. If you're watching this afterwards, leave a comment. If you watched all the way through, there's no chance in heck anyone did it. We are at 75 subscribers or 76 subscribers right now. Shooting for 100. That's going to be awesome. Where's Barry's YouTube channel? That's my gaming channel. Has 15,500 plus and I'm losing so many like every day because I don't do anything there anymore. Um, but 100 here would be, I would celebrate so much. That would be so awesome. This is a fun channel. Hopefully more people with Panasonic HCX1 show up. And we're starting to feel, have a little bit of a community of a couple different YouTubers uh, have in the comments talking about the camera. Actually, somebody reached out to me on the phone. I do run a video company where we don't, I don't do any green screen stuff for that. Um, that's more interviews and corporate videos and testimonials and stuff like that. Uh, but somebody reached out to my company because they saw the YouTube video. So that was pretty neat as well. And we d just talked about the camera for a minute. Um, yeah, please leave a comment, like, subscribe. And maybe when we get more subscribers and more of a community, we can do more live shows with people chatting, ans answering questions, and make this a cool, fun little thing. That's it for me. I will talk to y'all later. And see ya.